When fall rolls around, there is nothing better than soups, all kinds of soups. And we are doing one of our favorites today. We are doing a roasted butternut squash soup. Hey guys, if this is your first time tuning in, let us know you're out there by giving us a thumbs up below and then hit that subscribe button over here in the left corner to make sure you never miss a video. Now let's start cooking. There's a lot of different versions of butternut squash soup, but this one is a roasted butternut squash soup that is very simple. It uses very few ingredients because the squash itself is, a, is an organic version. It's been, been grown with, without any chemicals, without any pesticides, and the flavor is just to die for. So we don't want to, to mask that flavor with lots of seasonings and spices. So for our ingredients, we've got our, our squash, of course, and then I've got one onion that we're just going to slice. We've got a little bit of brown sugar because what that brown sugar does is it helps to caramelize it when it's roasting and it really uh, deepens the flavor as well and the color. And a little bit of salt, a little bit of coarse kosher salt, some black pepper, and we're gonna drizzle it with some olive oil to roast it. And then once we roast it, we will put it in a, in a pot or a cocotte with some uh, chicken stock a homemade chicken stock and you know if you wanted to keep this vegan or vegetarian you could certainly use a vegetable stock just making sure it's a really good one and really those are our ingredients let's get started let's look at about how to break down this butternut squash there's lots of ways to do it you know you could you could peel it by just using you know this kind of a peeler and just doing that kind of thing. You could just peel it all around and then you could cut it and then just cut it in the squares. You could slice it in half and then just cut it in squares. But rather than peeling it, etc., what we're going to do, I'm actually just gonna take off the stem end and we will just put it flat just like that. In fact, we can even take off the bottom end and what we'll do is we'll just put it flat on our board trying to make sure that we're staying safe and we're just going to take our knife and just go right down the center just like that cut it in half and now that that exposes our uh, seeds to us and now all we need to do is just take a spoon we've got our pan here our bowl and then we can just take our seeds out just like that now we um, you know you could save these seeds you could dry them out you could roast them etc um, personally uh, that's that's fine personally it's a lot of work and it's a lot of time and it's not as good to me as some spiced nuts or something so we'll be finishing this with some spiced nuts uh, rather than the seeds so I hate throwing those away, but it's really going to be fine. You could always put these back in the ground to grow some more seeds. All right, so that's how we break this down. And then what we'll do is we'll just take our paring knife. And I'm just going to make little slits in the squash itself like that and we'll come across this way and I'm going fairly deep for these cuts just like that and we'll do that for both sides and now what we'll do is we will go ahead we can put these in our pan just like that and we will drizzle it a nice little amount of olive oil and we'll sprinkle it with our salt and it may look like a lot of salt but there's a lot of meat to get through there and we'll sprinkle it with our brown sugar same thing and 
our freshly ground black pepper. And we'll just do that to both of these. We've got our oven preheated to 220 degrees uh, centigrade, about 425 Fahrenheit. And we will put these in the oven for about 40, 45 minutes until they're nice and soft and roasted and you've got some caramelization going. And from that point, we'll be able to make our soup. Just in case a reminder is necessary, we're gonna break down the onion. And so what I'd like to do with the onion is make a bridge and then we'll just cut it in half. And we are making slices of this onion. So what we'll do is um, we'll go ahead and peel, peel it using our paring knife. And now because we're slicing the onion, what we'll do is we'll just come straight down and we'll remove the root section. You know, if we were chopping this onion, we wouldn't remove the root section, but since we are slicing it, we can remove the root and that works out just fine. And we'll just come down just like that, putting our, using our thumb on the board to keep the onion from moving and using our knuckles as a guide. And then we just slice straight down just like that. So our butternut squash has been in the oven now for about 30 minutes. And uh, let's just take a look at that. Oh, look at that. Very nice. It's starting to, starting to show some signs of caramelization, which is great. And what I'd like to do at this point is you'll have some, some of the juices that'll be in the little cavity here. What I like to do is just baste it a little bit. And it's, it's actually already probably fine to, to take out. It's not totally, it's not totally cooked all the way through, which we don't necessarily need for it to be cooked all the way through. Just, uh, we're just really trying to establish some color. Oh, oh, the flavor is absolutely fantastic. And literally it's been seasoned with salt and pepper and a little bit of uh, Muscovado brown sugar. But we wanna go ahead and develop a little bit more caramelization on there. So we'll probably go ahead and leave it back, put it back in the oven and leave it for another 20 minutes or so. Our butternut squash should be ready to come out of the oven very shortly, but what we'll do in the meantime is we'll go ahead and we'll sweat our onions in our pot. And once those get nice and soft and translucent, we will then take our butternut squash out and we'll, we'll just uh, spoon it out of the, of the shell and we'll put them inside this this pot and let them start cooking. So we can go ahead and put our onions in now. And as always, we'll add just a little bit of salt so they can start giving up their moisture. And we'll let those, let those sweat. Okay, look at our butternut squash. Look at those nice pieces of char on there. That is just nothing but flavor. All right, so what we'll do now is we'll just, we'll just go through our squash and we'll spoon out the insides. And by that time, our, our onions should be nice and, and sweated. And we'll cook our squash in with our onions and go on from there. We have removed the meat from the butternut squash. And I'll tell you what, it's very tempting to put that some of that skin in there because it has great great flavor and it doesn't hurt if you have a little bit of the skin from the the smoother part uh, the part that's not caramelized because that will whiz up when we get ready to blend it but the uh, the outer edges that have the most caramelization would may have a little bit more of a hard time blending in so uh, but anyhow we've got our squash in here now and now we will just cover it with our chicken stock. And we're gonna bring this to the boil. And once it comes to the boil, we'll turn it down and we'll simmer it for about 20 minutes and that'll be it. Our butternut squash soup has now come to the boil. And wow, you can just, wow, it just looks great. And it's gonna be such a nice, nice, smooth flavor too, just wonderful flavor. Um, so we've come to the boil now and what we'll do is we'll just put the lid on and turn our heat down and we'll let it simmer for probably about 20 minutes. 
Hey everybody, it's Walter from Artistic Gourmet Adventures. My wife Kim and I own this unique small group tour company where we host groups of 6 to 12 guests for one week luxury adventures in beautiful locations throughout Europe and the United States. I have the privilege of being the adventure chef, creating and preparing daily gourmet meals for our guests. So in this video series from our cozy home kitchen here in the beautiful Loire Valley of France, we will demonstrate a wide variety of recipes from culinary classics to originals, as well as covering professional kitchen techniques for the home chef. For more information on Artistic Gourmet Adventures, check our website, linked in the description below. Our soup has been simmering now for about 25 minutes, and it is ready to go. Oh man, the aroma is incredible. And now we'll just take it off and bring it over here so we can blend it with our submersible blender. And I've said this before about blenders, you know, it's a, it's a lot easier to do this with an immersible blender to me than it is to do it, use a stand blender. You can use a stand blender, but you would need to take it out about two, two cups at a time and just keep doing that over and over. But when you've got a submersible blender, it really is helpful. So what we'll do is I'll start it on low, just going around the bowl and just get the larger, larger pieces whisked up. And then I'll just put it on high. And if you get to this point and you find that it's still too thick, you can always add a little bit of, um, of chicken stock if, you, if you'd like. Okay, let's look at our consistency and see if we like that. Oh yes, look at that. Beautiful consistency. Okay, so now let's just give it a taste. Literally, you could eat it just like it is. But in order to perfect it a little bit more, I'm actually gonna season it just a little bit because we didn't put very much salt in it from the beginning. So we'll season it just a little bit. And I'm just gonna add just a little bit of our heavy cream. We've got probably 75 milliliters of cream here. I'm literally gonna put maybe 30 mils of cream in that and we'll blend that in and see what it what it's like. Now let's give it a taste. Okay, that is absolutely spot on. That is what we want. So let's serve it up. Our soup is done and it is time for the taste test. Let's plate it up. Oh, look at that. Oh. Beautiful texture, very nice. Let me just get a couple of ladles full, just like that. Now let's do something kind of fancy. Let's do, uh, we'll just add a little bit of creme fraiche. like that. Then we'll just put a little dab of our, we've got some toasted nuts that we've ground up just over the top. Okay, and there we have it. That is our roasted butternut squash soup. It is time to dive in. Let's give it a taste. All right, a little bit of the creme fraiche, a little bit of the nuts. Mmm. Mmm. It's really beautiful. It's just the beautiful flavor of the butternut squash itself comes through. There's so very few ingredients to this that it really allows the, the vegetable to shine. So I think you'll like it, hope you'll try it. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, give us a thumbs up below and hit that subscribe button, it's free. 
and ring the bell if you want to be notified as soon as we release a new video. Also, let us know in the comments if you have any special recipe requests. We really appreciate you tuning in. See you next time.